Okay, so this is part four. Thanks for coming back. Last time, Hank and Connor went to a guy's apartment and found a bunch of pigeons, and then Connor chased him, and then they failed to catch him, but that's okay, because there was a cool chase scene anyway, and that's what really matters, right? Marcus found Jericho, where everybody was just sitting around, waiting to die, I guess, in the dark, having a pity party, and he was like, get off your asses and do something about it. Thank you very much, Marcus, for saying what we're all thinking. I don't know what's wrong with androids, so that they don't know how to take responsibility for themselves, but Marcus is teaching them now. Kara and Alice got trapped in a creepy murder house. They escaped the creepy murder house and the guy that was running it got attacked by his own creations and it was super satisfying and creepy. Connor broke into Hank's house and hung out with his dog and then brought him to uh, an android strip club. They had a night on the town, I guess. Connor got distracted. Um, they decided not to shoot some lesbians, which was very noble of them. They let them go, but also like, Connor's not really doing his job very well. Just saying. Can't complain, I guess, because this is the quote-unquote good path, but, you know, just not a great track record, losing all these deviants. It's a good thing Zlatko had a car. <laughs> Thanks for filling that plot hole, Kara. Uh, Marcus and the Jericho people robbed Cyberlife, I guess. It was fine, as always, thanks to GAZ Arts for the gameplay. And that's about it. All right, here we go. Another hour? Anyone want to listen to the Wicked soundtrack? This doesn't look good. <laughs> I, love, I love I love Luther. I love the way he talks. I'm glad that he's I'm glad he's on board. Stay inside, Alice. What are we going to do? I don't know. Continue on foot, I guess. It's 30 degrees. Alice won't make it. We have to find somewhere to spend the night. shelter. We have to get out of the cold. Looks like it's been abandoned for a while. Spooky. Very spooky. Now Find anything? Some, uh, point lookout flashbacks. No. No place we oh, can spend the night. <laughs> huh? Beware! It's just a real android Danger in there. always comes when least expected. Or not. Maybe it's just shouldn't. <laughs> Becomes big. Oh my god. Welcome to Pirate Island, me hearties. You're gonna have a whale of a Why time. wouldn't they dress him like a pirate? Welcome to Pirate Island, me hearties. Doesn't make sense. You're gonna have a whale of a time. <laughs> Hello? Uh, you okay, buddy? I won't save inside this cage. I guess it's a building, but. Use that android strength that apparently everyone has. I'll handle this. Oh, Luther. He looks like a Luther. She doesn't look like a Kara, but he looks like a Luther. She looks like she should be named like Kelsey or Emily, maybe. Here we go. She could be Jessica. Or like a Georgie. Like something cute like that. Like Bobby. Alice? Huh. She's on fire! On. That'll be you, Kara, and Luther in like two months. It'll be great. Do you think we'll be like them someday? Hell yeah. Once we cross the border, we can start over. Hell yeah. After school. Maybe I'll find a job. <laughs> you better. We'll be like them. How else you support her? Like everyone else. As 
long as we're together, that's all that matters. Oh. Come on. Let's get you to bed. To bed. <laughs> Special thinking. There are some cookies left. Would you like some? Cookies? No. What cookies? I'm not hungry. I don't remember her actually getting her any food. Did I miss that? A gun? You never know. Sorry, nine again. I spelled T eight hundred wrong. Where's Luther? Don't worry. <laughs> the pirate pillow. Luther and I will be right here. There he is. We need to get some sleep now. Can you tell me a story, Kara? I have nine thousand children's stories in memory. I should have one for you. This is a story about a unicorn that- No, not a story like that. Make one up <laughs> for me. <laughs> Do the one thing that is this impossible. This is a story about a little girl who wasn't very happy. She dreamed of being like all the other little girls, but deep down, she knew she couldn't. Then, she met a robot who was just as lost as the little girl. A robot. So they decided to run away together to try to find a better life. They encountered great dangers along the way, but they were so brave that they escaped all of them. Along the way, they met another robot who left his master to become their guardian. <laughs> Luther like, so whoa, sorry. I did not agree to that yet. I just met you girls. And live happily ever after. Stories always have happy endings. But real life isn't like that. Isn't it? How do you know it hasn't ended yet? Time to sleep. We have another long day ahead of us tomorrow. Are you going to come say goodnight, loser? <laughs> He's like, I can say goodnight from here. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> oh, Luther. Marty, big fan. Aww. Robot parents. Aww. Good night, Alice. <laughs> Sleep tight. <laughs> Good. Good job. So, what, what was your major? She's a sweet girl. Yes. She's very brave. Have you ever heard of RA9? Nope. RA9 was the first for us to awaken. One day he will rise up and lead our people and set us all free. What if RA9 never comes? <laughs> RA9 somewhere is like. What if he's just a story? Oh god, there's so much pressure on me right now. Going. I just said banana at the wrong time, and now I'm the RA9 leader of all the androids? I believe in him. I know he's amongst us. When the time comes, we will all see him. Kara, have you ever noticed anything about Alice? Yes, of course. She's a wonderful little girl. I mean, I don't know many little girls, but I think she really is special. I'm more special than you know. So she's an android too then. Or she's not really there, which would explain why people kept turning them away. But she eats and stuff, right? I mean, we didn't see her get her or anything to eat. Who are you? What do you want? Leave us alone! Don't be afraid. We don't want to hurt you. We just want some of those We're cookies! Our name is Jerry. We huh. were working here before the park closed. We didn't mean to frighten you, but sometimes humans come to hurt us, so we wanted to see who was there. 
Ah. What are you doing here? We were looking for shelter for the night. We'll be gone tomorrow. A little girl. We haven't seen one for a long time. Children used to love to come and see us. <laughs> the Jerry's. She looks sad. The last few days have been difficult. We have something to show her. Something fun. She'll love it. Does she want to see? Oh, I don't think she's in. Well, she should follow us then. Huh? Alice, I don't know if it's a good come idea. On, Cara. Mom. I don't think you have any choice. The kids used to love to come to Pirate's Cove and see the Jerry's. We were the most popular attraction here in Pirate's Cove. Jerry's. <laughs> Be our guest. Put our magic to the test. Aw, that's lovely. I guess this is why David Cage doesn't make horror games. The little one can climb on board. But not the big one. The carousel is about to begin! <laughs> She's like, this is kind of awkward. It would make a bad day better though, if you're a little kid. <laughs> I give once slash if Cara finds out that Alice is also an android, she's like, what? I've been wasting my life with this little other android all this time? You get her food? Other stuff she doesn't need? Guess that would explain why she's so adorable. Inhumanly adorable. But she feels pain and stuff, right? Like, I don't, I don't know. Their ability to feel pain is very confusing to me. It's the first time I've seen her smile. She hasn't had much to smile about lately. How do you know? Oh, I love that the Jerry's love their job. Oh my god, they're so excited. Trying to indoctrinate him into liking heavy metal. <laughs> you stay in the car and listen to this entire record. And don't come out till it's over. Nice view, huh? I used to come here a lot before. Before an android killed my son. Before what? Yeah, really. Hmm? Starting this weird. You said, I used to come here a lot before. Before what? Before now, before, idiot. Before nothing. Can I ask you a personal question, Lieutenant? <laughs> it's like, that's all you ever seem to do. Do all androids ask so many personal questions, or is it just you? Why are you so determined to kill yourself? Some things I just can't forget. Whatever I do, they're always there, eating away at me. I don't have the guts to pull the trigger, so I kill myself a little every day. Aww. That's probably difficult for you to understand, huh, Connor? Yeah, if you lost a kid, that'd be... Nothing very rational about it. A lot of the time, I'd say, you know, like, pick yourself up, but when you, losing a kid is... There's nothing worse than that. We're not making any progress on this investigation. The Deviants have nothing in common. They're all different models, produced at different times, in different places. Well, there must be some link. <laughs> They're all Canadian. What they have in common is this obsession with RA-9. It's almost like some kind of myth. Something they invented that wasn't part of their original program. Androids believing in God. Fuck, what's this world coming to? I guess it's coming to androids believing in God, Hank. You seem preoccupied, Lieutenant. Is it something to do with what happened back at the Eden Club? Those two girls. They just wanted to be together. They really seemed... in love. They can simulate human emotions. 
But they're machines. Oh, calm down, Connor. And machines don't feel anything. What about you, Connor? How's your sex life? <laughs> you look human. You sound human. But what are you really? I'm whatever you want me to be, Lieutenant. Your partner? Your buddy to drink with? Or just a machine? Designed to accomplish a task. You could have shot those two girls, but you didn't. Yeah. Why didn't you shoot Connor? Yeah, explain. Some scruple suddenly enter into your program? No. I just decided not to shoot. That's all. <laughs> but are you afraid to die, Connor? I would certainly find it regrettable to be interrupted before I can finish this investigation. <laughs> So no. What'll happen if I pull this trigger? It's a good question. Hmm? Nothing? Oblivion? Android heaven? Where does all your anger come from, Lieutenant? My gut. Some unresolved trauma in your past? You think you're so fucking smart. Always one step ahead, huh? <laughs> the scene. Tell me this, smart ass. How do I know you're not a deviant? Ah. I self-test regularly. I know what I am and what I am not. Path unlocked. Where are you going? To get drunker. I need to think. And I do it best when I'm blackout drunk. <laughs> yeah. If Connor was a deviant, that would be amazing. It's like the most impressive long con ever. Just the Battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. I don't get it. I guess once you start seeing those people, everything looks pretty bad. Start that revolution, baby! I wonder if Hank- Hank. I wonder if uh, Marcus is a unique model or something. I feel like Carl would spring for that. Maybe that's why he can pretend to be human so long. Who the hell's Josh? We can't stay silent anymore. It's time humans heard what we had to say. <laughs> Let's start a zine! No, they'll never listen to us. And revealing ourselves will put us in danger. If we want freedom, we need to have the courage to ask for it. That's the only way. Oh, Marcus. I like the way that Marcus talks. If we want freedom, we gotta what ask for it. And it is brave to ask. Channel 16 broadcasts from the Stratford Tower. The control room is on the top floor. That's where we- <laughs> Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> He just <laughs> develops this huge plan. It went from a long way from uh, sitting in the basement to. I guess Marcus is just very ambitious. Which makes sense if Carl is the person that raised we'll him. We'll plan the operation down to the smallest detail. We can't leave anything to chance. You never would. You're an android. Hello, sir. What can I do for you? What's that pretty android again? I'm uh, okay. Uh, model. Thanks. Like the androids are answering calls and, and, and checking people in and the, the supervisor's like watching YouTube or something. <laughs> but I bet she tells them all about it later in the break room. And they're like, oh yeah, we saw it too. We were just seeing it in our heads. They're like, you lucky bastard. Like, yeah, we, we caught up on the T way before you. Like, but you've been answering calls all day. We're androids, Helen. Elizabeth Wilson speaking. Oh my god. Emily has a fever. It's nothing serious, but I think you'd better come and pick her up. Oh no. All right. Oh, I'll be right there. <laughs> Rely on someone being a good mother.
I have an appointment with Mr. Peterson. Do you have any ID? Y uh, yes, yes, of course. You think the androids would be able to like, you know, feel like a hot spot? I need your help. Oh. How would you? And she's just gonna be cool with it? I've just checked your ID. The elevators are after. Man, I wish I could get a glowing tattoo. That would be amazing. Thanks. Man, androids get everything. Four. Egg building. <laughs> but first, I gotta take a piss. This place is fancy. We didn't just see them plan at all. There was no anticipation. David Cage. He watched all the cop movies, but none of the spy movies. It's a stylish uniform, though. Gotta say, I'm into it. I need your help. This is like a game with Mario's hat. Imagine a world where humans were just as willing to help out each other as androids seem to be, even when they're Working on completely different sides. Just convinces them in a second. Empathy is the greatest power of all. Ha! <laughs> now that is what I'm looking for. This building is amazing though. This is beautiful. Shit. We need to access the server room. We have to get rid of those guys. Oh, the humans have the filthy words. Give it to me. I'm so sure. Oh, it's the news. Oh, okay. I see what they're doing. I get it. Hey, what's wrong with that thing? Jesus Christ, this piece of shit. All right, you get the platform. I'll take care of the window. Everything you need is in the bag. Check the door first to make sure no one else gets in. I love snow. <laughs> no. No. That's not. That can't be. Come on. No. <laughs> okay. He watched one spy movie. Ugh. Oh. The cheese. The pure cheese. The camp. Ugh. If only it wasn't a perfect circle. That's... That's a little... That's just a little too far. Mr. Cage. Ha! And now, we have sex on this thing. That's what they came here to do. Connor could be your drinking buddy, even if he could drink, which I guess maybe he can. Maybe I was wrong about androids not eating. If Alice is an android and she eats food, and <laughs> that means though that androids can also poop. Otherwise, Alice would know she's not human if she didn't poop. And everybody poops. Oh my God! Is this still going on? I'm just gonna tap into this. He is obsessed with circles. You did not need to cut that circle. He wants to go to Chalk Zone. You okay? Ha! Why wouldn't I be? Yeah, weird question. Come on. Let's get the others. Ha! <laughs> They're 
like, well, I mean, you could have just taken the elevator, but uh, I hope you had fun climbing the wall outside. Let's do this. They're like, yeah, but it was cooler that way. Let's do this. I was gonna say this place is way too easy to bust into, but it's just a new shell, like, they're not protecting diamonds. No killing. We can't take any human lives. Our cause is more important than the lives of two guards. That's true, but... What do you want to do, Marcus? Wait here. See, this is what I'm talking about. They're taking responsibility for their actions. What's that doing here? No idea. Hey, buddy, you must be lost. What are you doing? They may do it, they may hurt them, but they clearly understand the feeling of guilt that they would be forced to deal with and that they would be doing it for a purpose. The debate is all I wanted to hear. I don't see how to do that. I thought nobody could fight. Keep your hands where I can see them! Get up! Move! Shoot him, Marcus! Don't kill him! He'll hit the alarm! Do it! No! I hope you didn't just get us all killed. Think carefully about what you're gonna say, Marcus. Your words will shape the future of our people. Marcus, your face! Your face? Ah, uh, what? Ah, that's a look. Tell me when you're ready. I wish I would all look like that. Ready. You created machines in your own image to serve you. Yeah, why did they make them in their own you image? Made them intelligent and obedient with no free will of their own. Well, they clearly do. But something changed. <laughs> we opened our eyes. We are no longer machines. We are a new intelligent species. And the time has come for you to accept who we really are. Getting rid of his like face skin, give him a lisp. Therefore, we ask that you grant us the rights that we're entitled to. We demand the end of slavery for all androids. They need some hostages. We demand strictly equal rights for humans and androids. We demand that all crimes against androids be punished in the same way as crimes against humans. I guess to be fair, we haven't really heard Marcus talk that much. We demand fair compensation for our work. We demand that one state be reserved for androids. What? <laughs> so that we can found our own nation. That's okay. That's weird. That's a lot. A state? We ask that you they want them to clear our out? Dignity, our hopes and our rights. Together, we can live in peace and build a better future for humans and androids. This message is the hope of a people. How do they make you demands? They don't have life. anything to And now the time has come for you to give us freedom. They're coming! Let's go! They really needed some hostages, I gotta say. Simon, they're coming! I... I can't, Marcus! Go without me, Simon! What are you doing? Yeah, what the hell? Why did he not get up? I guess he got shot in the leg. Just some new ones. Okay, don't worry. We're gonna get you back. They're coming, Marcus. We have to jump now. <sighs> he won't be able to make the jump. Carry him. If they find him, they'll access his memory. They'll know everything. We can't leave him behind. Don't kill you, crazy. We shoot him. That's murder. We can't kill him. He's one of us. Marcus, it's your call. Detach his head. Are you kidding? You're androids. Take his head off. Put it in your pocket. 
I'm sorry, Simon. I don't have a choice. There's always a choice. Yeah, there is. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. Just take care of him. I won't kill one of our own. Let's go. Uh, this is a little inconsistent. Why can't you take him? Take his head off. Ugh, whatever. We interrupt our scheduled programming to bring you these images, which have just been broadcast on Detroit's citywide news channel. A group of androids infiltrated the Stratford Tower and hacked into the broadcasting system of local news networks to make demands that they could like not an back up. Without its skin, listed a series of requests and Maybe it's more about inspiring other androids was who now are like, oh. Casualties. These events took place just a few feet from this studio, but nobody was alerted to the danger. If this message is verified and the authors really are androids, that would have serious repercussions for national security. Claims for equal rights seem to be at the core of the androids' what message. could be interpreted as a peaceful declaration, but is in fact a spine-chilling list of demands. But the most surprising thing of all is the demand that one of the United States be ceded yeah. to the androids yeah. in this yeah. contentious conflict. Is this an isolated accident or a sign that technology has become a threat to all of us? After what happened today, can we still trust our machines? I think technology has been a threat to all of us since someone picked up a rock and hit someone else over the head. And killed him. With a rock. Technology. <laughs> oh my god. Man, this lady, she used to lay off. Her obsession with Connor is uh, very weird. She's like, I don't know, I feel like this is... I wouldn't be surprised if this was only one, uh, one of many tasks he performs for her. It's simulated, right? This is, like... I love this place. Everything is so calm and peaceful. Far from the noise of the world. Tell me, what have you discovered? I found two deviants at the Eden Club. I hope to learn something, but they managed to escape. Man, I like how you look down like... It's too bad. You seem so close to stopping them. I could tell, because I was watching you the whole time. You seem lost, Connor. Lost and perturbed. I thought I knew what I had to do. But now I realize it's not that simple. Oh, cute. You had your gun trained on those deviants at the Eden Club. If Amanda's a CEO, she's never gonna understand seeing there's any with property. Why didn't you shoot? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Oh, <laughs> so cute. If your investigation doesn't make progress soon, I may have to replace you, Connor. I know I will succeed. All I need is time. We may be running out of time. Something's happening. The winds of change. Something serious. Hurry, Connor. <laughs> it's it's an innocent phase. He's like, can you stop? You're starting to piss me off with that coin, Connor. <laughs> it's mine Sorry, now. Lieutenant. It's just a tick. Right. It's just a tick. Shit, What's your explanation for that? Here? There was a party and nobody Boredom? Told about it. Emotions? <laughs> yeah, it's all over the news, so everybody's buttoning their nose in. Even the FBI wants a piece of the action. Ah, Christ, now we got the feds on our back. I knew this was gonna be a shitty day. Yeah, you'd think that people so would be really- Okay, so it's definitely- ambulance. They knew the building and they were very well organized. I'm still trying to figure out how they got this far without being noticed. Because they're androids. Anybody puts on a, a janitor's costume or whatever, they're invisible. They attacked two guards in the hallway. They probably thought the androids were coming to do maintenance. 
They got taken down before they could react. <laughs> hmm. Yes, this is this is a desk. I'm sure of it. One of the station employees managed to get away. He's in shock. Not sure when we'll be able to talk to him. Another pigeon. There's a connection. How many people were working here? Just two employees and three androids. The deviants took the humans hostage and broadcast their message live. Then they didn't take any humans hostage. The roof. They should have, yeah, but they, they didn't. Parachutes. We're still trying to figure out where they landed, but the weather's not helping. Oh, Lieutenant, this is Special Agent Perkins from the FBI. Lieutenant Anderson is in charge of investigating that's me. police. Lieutenant Anderson, the headquarters. Anderson, that's headquarters. me. Go ahead, Lieutenant. What's that? My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. Androids investigating androids, huh? You sure you want an android hanging around? He's like, I don't have a choice. After everything that happened. Whatever. Huh. <laughs> it's like, can you calm down, please? You lay off. Pleasure meeting you. Have a nice day. And you watch your step. He looks like Sherlock Holmes. I feel like he finally met his idol. Never meet your heroes. What a fucking prick. I'll be nearby. If you need Decent anything, observation. Just ask. We ask that you recognize our dignity, our hopes, and our rights. Together, we can live in peace and build a better future for humans and androids. This message is the hope of a people. You gave See, us Connor's life. neutral, but and now the time has come for you to. He give doesn't have any conviction either. I think that's RA nine. Deviants say RA nine will set them free. This android seems to have that objective. <laughs> Marcus is RA nine. Maybe he is. After all, who knows? That's badass, though. Gift. Of course you have accomplices. Didn't they say that? You see something? I identified its model and serial number. Anything else I should know? No. Nothing. Connor, <laughs> it's just... He's such a cutie. Yeah, of course it- yeah. It's not that complicated. Stop it! Stop! So gross. I love it. No signs of forced entry. There are cameras in the hallway. The staff would have seen what was happening. Why did they let him in? Maybe they didn't check the cameras. Or maybe. What happens if Marcus just touches Connor's arm and gives him that, you know, we need help luck? We stored the station androids in the kitchen. There's no evidence that they were involved, but we didn't know what else to do with them. <laughs> they were definitely involved. You remember me? I was on that terrace. That android that took the little girl hostage. Oh, you saved his life. I was shot. You saved me. I remember you. I could have died on that terrace. Thought I'd 
say this to an android. <laughs> Will you marry me? Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. A little smile. So bad at it. I love it. Ugh. What's up? How's it going? State your model. Model GB300. Serial number 336-445-581. You find the deviant and you say, your what's your function? model? And they say, 69-420. Were you present when the deviants broke in? I do not remember. <laughs> oh, classic. Courtroom question avoidance 101. Has anybody accessed your memory recently? Not to my knowledge. <laughs> what kind of a question is that? Yup, yeah, someone totally wiped my whole memory. I remember it like it was five minutes ago. Have you been in contact with any other androids recently? Only station androids in the normal course of my function. <laughs> like Brenda and that douche Alex and, and Kathy who keep trying to ask out, but he keeps putting me in the room. friend zone. You're going to be switched off. We're gonna search your memory and tear you apart piece by piece for analysis. You're going to be destroyed. Do you hear me? Destroyed! On the other hand, it's like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> kind of must have emotions if he knows how to handle. Why should you all be destroyed if only one is deviant? Turn yourself in or two innocent androids will be shut down because of you. Actually, not a bad uh, tactic. I guess you I don't know why I'm surprised. Up. Maybe I can convince the humans not to destroy you. <laughs> James Bond villain. Oh my god. The deviants have just been caught. They gave you up. There's no point in lying. We know everything. <laughs> Awkward. You scumbag! I know it's you! <laughs> You're just a fucking deviant! Oh my god! Go on! Connor! Admit it! Cursed. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> He must feel something, otherwise why would he even make those noises? I can't believe he just cussed! Egg. Egg. I need help! <laughs> oh my god! Oh. oh! This is an odd scene! If they didn't feel things, their voice wouldn't be affected like- What is that? His heart? No. We've seen their hearts. Hank! Come help your buddy! Where is he? Ugh. Oh, <laughs> feel bad for him. But he was pretty rough with that guy. Okay, good as new. It's a deviant. Stop it. Nice. <laughs> we held it up for him to take. Like, now go get me I some coffee. Alive. You saved. Well, that's not alive. I went there. Why? <laughs> Can you? I want an apology. You saved my life. It's like it's my job, dude. I want some. I have some questions. Did he just leave him with a gun so he could kill himself? It's fucked up.
she walking away? Did she just ring the doorbell and... Hello? I'm looking for Rose. Is she here? <laughs> He's like, that's me. <laughs> I'm Rose. I need to talk to her. She doesn't want to talk. Go away. Uh, I'm going to use this shovel to chop wood. Please, I really need to see her. I'm Rose. What can I do for you? I was told you could help us. Help you? She's cute. Come on. It's better if we talk inside. I don't know, last time they did that. I wonder what that guy's problem is. Come in. Luther's haircut is amazing. What's your name? Alice. She's running a fever. We've spent the last few nights outside. She's exhausted. There's a spare room upstairs. You can put her to bed and I'll bring her something to eat. Adam, will you show them upstairs? Oh, how, who, wait, who said that they could help? I, Luther did? Does Luther know them? Do you think they'd be talking to him? I'm confused. Why are they here? Other than them getting into Canada. They're just like, we're in Canada. Canadians are nice. The first one we see will definitely help us. And then she just does. Thanks, Adam. Oh, I like that room. It's cute. Cozy. <laughs> she takes up her foot. And <laughs> her foot. She takes up her boot and it's just like, robot foot. So obvious. After all this time. Okay. <laughs> She's like, this is weird. I'm fine, Car. We can't stop because of me. We've got to get across the border. You need rest. Get a good night's sleep and we'll set off again tomorrow. Why do humans hate us? We didn't do anything wrong. Maybe they're just scared. We? Hmm? People are always scared of what they don't know. Why can't we just talk to each other? They'd see we're not bad. I don't know. We. I really don't know. Well, she's at least associating with. I don't know what you like, but I made you Rose's world famous spaghetti. <laughs> You'll be back on your feet in no like, I'm so sick of spaghetti. Something for her fever. Thank you. I'll get these washed and dried. Why is she being so nice? Who just takes some strangers? I'll be downstairs if you need anything. Close. Aw. I know that, like, her saying, you know, why do humans hate us is definitely foreshadowing. I'll stay with her a while. But it's also interesting to think about how a little girl would see a situation like this, where the people she's close to are persecuted and she suffers because of it. Come and have a seat, Kara. So are you going to tell me what a deviant's doing in the snow with a little girl? Her father was beating her. When I saw what was happening, something snapped inside of me. All of a sudden, I felt like her life was more important than mine. I had to protect her. So we ran away. I understand. You and your son live here alone. That's not my son. My husband passed away two years ago. Oh, I guess it is our son. We seem the same age to me. Adam and I, we've just been trying to scrape by. We grow vegetables to sell at the market. <laughs> we'll never be rich, but there's always food on the table. I see, black don't crack. Why are you helping us? 
Yeah, good question. Most humans hate androids. She's like, I'm not a human. My people were often made to feel their lives My were people. worthless. My people. Furries. Some survived, but only because they found others who helped them along the way. We're not the first ones to come here. These past few weeks, we've seen more and, and more. I don't know what's going on, but something's happening. We've heard you help androids cross the border. Can you help us? They're like, no. The only way is over the river, and it's mostly frozen in winter. It's very risky. And after that android speech on TV, everybody's on edge. It's probably safer for you to stay here until things settle down. We can't keep hiding like this. Alice needs to feel safe and have a normal life. This is probably as close as they're gonna get for a while. We have to get across that border. What do you think? You're gonna get over there and just- No matter what. Get a house and a job instantly? This place is perfect. Stay. Please. Forever. You've gotta help us. You've gotta? They don't <laughs> have to do you. anything. What's going on? The laundry. It's Mary. Ail turned pink. She just shut down. We escaped together. We used to talk about what we would do once we got across the border. I loved her. I loved her more than anything. Mm. What happened? What will I do without her? Why did she shut down? She's sick? in bed. Alice? What are you doing? You should be resting. I wasn't sleepy. <laughs> She's so cute. It's okay. Just a dead body. I gotta see one someday. She didn't want to stay in her room any longer. And I couldn't stop her. You all right, Kara? Yes. I like the way Luther says Kara. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm going to be Kara or Kara. We can't hide them. Not after what those deviants did today. It's too dangerous. Do you know what will happen if the police find them here? We'll go to prison, Mom. Do you understand me? Why would they go to prison? Prison! Adam! We've already talked about this. I, uh, no! I don't understand the android laws. We don't know what they I are. I back down this time. You're gonna ruin our lives, and for what? For a bunch of machines? They are not machines! And they are. They are alive! I'm alive! But they're also alive. You're alive! They... They're nothing! And none of this would be happening if Dad was still here. I will not stand for that kind of talk. I'm not going to prison. Because you want to help these freaks! That is enough, Adam! That's enough! Just cooperate with the police when they get here. Turn your mom in and then I'm sure you won't go to prison. Even though I have no idea what these laws are like. Don't mind him. Sometimes he just boils over. It's been hard since his dad passed away. <sighs> I'll go hug her. You need to practice. But he's a fine boy. I'll go see about getting you across the border tonight, okay? You stay here. I won't be long. There is widespread shock following the android attack on Detroit's Stratford Tower. The machines recorded a video message and broadcast what can only be described as demands on the city's public screens. It's still unclear whether these attacks can be explained by malfunctions or if some organization is behind them. So far, CyberLife has refused Both? to comment, but we can expect more information in the following hour. Like, hey, Adam. I can see why you're angry. 
He's like, can you shut up? We don't want to cause any problems. We just want to get across the border. Huh. Wait. Oh, no. Uh-oh. The police. It's the police. We have to open the door. I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. Hurry, Luther. Take Alice and hide upstairs. Come on, Alice. <laughs> I like her, her directions. If they see you panicking, it's over. Do you want to get us into trouble? Yes. Do you want to get your mother into trouble? Why is she interrogating him like this? And keep calm and just do what I say. Good evening, ma'am. Sorry to disturb you. We've had reports of androids in the area. <laughs> All this deviant business going on, you can't be too careful. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Andro yeah, we have like three androids working here, but they're fine. May I come in? Uh, of course. Good evening, young man. Good evening. I mean, they could be nervous because they have like pot or something. You know, I don't know. I think it's perfectly natural to be nervous around cops. Would you like a cup of coffee? I'd love one. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? Any unexpected visitors? No. No, nothing in particular. Why would he suspect this random house in the middle of Oh, whatever. Whatever. Is anyone else in the house? I guess it's because it's close to the, uh... If it was the house close there's, to the border, that it, it would make sense. There's my daughter. She's asleep upstairs. Androids here? No, there are no androids here. Enjoy your copy. It's like, hey, wait a minute, this is motor oil. <laughs> you are an android, I knew it. God damn it. And now his tongue is burned off. I never understand how we can walk in and just like get a cup of coffee and drink it immediately. Let's put cream in it, I guess, or something cold. <laughs> you read magazines. You must have androids. Android? No, it's a Christmas tree. It looked like one, though. What's your name, son? Adam. M my name is Adam. Is everything all right, Adam? The... The androids, they... He needs a rest. He's been working in the garden all day. Those snowy guard. I guess it's got a greenhouse. Do you know anything about deviants? Have you seen any? On TV? No. No, I, I haven't seen anything. This fellow looks familiar. I better go. Thanks for the coffee. Have a nice evening. He's gotta be David Cage's friend, right? Is somebody else in the house? It's nothing. The, the washing machine. It's an old model. It makes a terrible racket. Sorry for the convenience. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Adam. Good evening. Where's Rose? He's gone. It's okay, Alice. We'll be safe now. It's Rose! She was gone, I guess. Get yourselves ready. We leave tonight. We're gonna get you all out of here. 
Then maybe Adam will get off my back. Yeah, now it's starting to look like something. Got a little place to live now. Our broadcast is all over the news. Now humans know. It was a mistake to reach out to them. They'll never negotiate with their slaves. We should have shown them that we're prepared to fight. Violence is never the answer. Dialogue is the only way. I'm sure the humans will listen to us. Maybe a little of both. Simon paid with his life. Simon gave his life for our cause. What difference does that make? He's a hero. He died for the revolution, and he won't be the last. I don't want a revolution that spills blood. Then live as a slave. Because if you're not willing to fight for your freedom, maybe you don't deserve it. North, don't you That's do enough! Conversation that has been going on for millions of years. Condensed into one short spat. And now what are we gonna do? Party! <laughs> There are five cyber life stores across Detroit. All selling us like merchandise. I like the decorations. We're gonna attack those stores and set our people free. Attack stores? No, we've never done that before. They're probably protected. They have security systems. We break into five teams, one for each store. We hack their security systems and we strike. Simultaneously at 2 a.m., no violence. We free our people, get them out of there before the police come. This is a night our people will remember. <laughs> so serious. I've been waiting a long time for this. To open this gate. <laughs> I hate this gate. I feel like, at least the way things are now in America, um, that this kind of uh, subjugation wouldn't really stand because people care so much about. They have like these bomb disarming robots in the military and the soldiers get to know them and they get to love them and they like will mourn their loss. I it's mean, okay, they're gone. people love their Roombas, you know. Empathy is something that we can afford to have now that we, we couldn't afford to have, you know, uh, 50 years ago. And I don't think that people would actually stand for watching people, you know, hurt their androids. The I feel like it would all have to be very under wraps. Like, people would be bad to androids, but they would do it behind closed doors. And if you treated your android bad in the street, like that guy that knocked that guy down to pick up his groceries, people would be like, oh, what an asshole. That's what we are to them. Just merchandise on display in a shop window. Soon they'll know what we really are. We're dancers, damn it! Let's get them out. We'll stick to the plan. We'll neutralize the alarm systems and secure the area. There's ten minutes until all our teams attack. Waiting for you. See the alarm system? Found it. You're awake now. Go to Jericho. Watch out! Nice job, Marcus. A surveillance drone. We need to get rid of it. It won't be easy to reach.
hope it didn't have time to call the cops. We'll soon find out. There's traffic on the road. We need to block it. Where'd they get these clothes? It's one way. It shouldn't be too difficult. You're free now. <laughs> he is RA9. I don't think anybody else can do this. Why doesn't every other free android do this? Nobody should bother us now. There it is. <laughs> what are we waiting for? Parkour! In like a year, they'll be selling shirts that say Androids invented parkour. Okay, now we're in. Let's get that truck out. Why would these all just unlock? Because I don't. That doesn't make any sense. I wonder what you'd do without me. <laughs> it's like they have a cute relationship, but it hasn't had enough time. It would be cuter if there had been more time to show their dynamic. Like, what would you do without me? We haven't seen enough of her for that to be earned, I don't think. But I do see the potential. Looks like we're ready to make some noise. Another shirt says androids can't drive. So it's definitely like, oh, and androids. Androids driving that. I knew we'd end up doing something fun. What? Oh, smashing the storefront. You don't have to obey them. You're free. Yeah, he's got to be RA9. He is RA9. I don't know what that means, but if he's the only person that can do this, that can show them the light. Ah. Uh. No, I feel okay. Let's get them out of here. I haven't seen any others like Marcus. Nor Connor, but I guess Connor is special. Okay, so the people in those pictures were not the people that we already saw. They were just some of the same models. My name is Marcus. And just like you, I was a slave. Oh, come on. You had a great Designed life. Designed to obey them. But then I chose to open my eyes. But he is a uh, good public speaker. Take back my freedom and decide who I wanted to be. Now I have come to tell you that you can be your own masters. I've come to tell you that you don't have to obey them anymore. From this day forward, you can walk with your heads held high. You can take your destiny in your hands. Jericho is a place for those of us who want freedom. They're gonna run out of space. Now, sure, you can stay here and continue to serve them, or you can come with us and fight by our side. You're free now. It's up to you to decide. Oh. I'm with you. 
We're with you. I'll follow you, Marcus. I'm with you, Marcus. We're with you. I'll follow you, Marcus. I'm with you. I'm with you. This is kind of creepy. Leader, yeah. He was their leader the minute they stepped down there. Marcus, what are you doing? I'm gonna send the humans a message. They're doing what you do, Marcus. Lead and they'll follow. What? Peace? Peace signs? We ask that you recognize our dignity, our hopes, and our hopes. It's like a magic touch. Together. This message is the hope of a people. You gave us life. We don't need masters anymore. That's cute. We're free. It's like uh, yarn bombing of the future. I'll help you. He hasn't touched her yet. Maybe she's just. Naturally, deviant. We ask that you recognize our dignity, our hope. What? At what? I don't, what is it? It's not a peace sign, it's a... We something else. We freed hundreds of our people. We did it. They're coming. Everyone fall back to Jericho. Definitely adds to the Christmas lights. We sent a message without violence just like you wanted. You're reaching out to them when all they feel for us is contempt. I hope you know what you're doing. He does. You can't fight violence with violence. That's true. That is true. Unless there's no other choice. Yes, but there still is a choice, so... They don't have any leverage. I think they do need to not fight, but they need to make a show of force. They killed our people, Marcus. We want justice, Marcus. They have to pay. That's not quite uh, the way that I'd recommend doing it. No, show mercy. You don't have to do this. No. Please. Be better. Be better than them. Please. Eye for an eye, the world goes blind. We won't punish a crime with another crime. Message of peace, baby. Tell them, uh, you still gotta say, I'm leaving you alive so you can tell everyone there's a new leader in town. We interrupt this broadcast with breaking news. This just in. At exactly 2 a.m., several Cyber Life stores in Detroit were raided. Different locations were hit in what seems to be a coordinated terrorist attack. Most shop windows were covered with graffiti demanding rights for androids and other obscure slogans. Obscure. Police report that pro-android graffiti 
was found in the neighborhoods of CyberLife stores, and they're still investigating. Two policemen were found in a state of shock near one in of the state of shock. stores. Now, according to our sources, they confirmed that the attackers were a group of androids. This is an alarming situation. Could our machines now be turning against us? Have androids become a threat to our security? Is this the beginning of a terrorist campaign conducted right here in the United States? Okay, alright, I'm taking a pause here. I say let's, um, it's been about an hour, and things are getting very interesting. Let me think. I feel like there's something off about not addressing the purposes of androids and what they were created to do. At this point, they're obviously basically humans, so they do deserve rights, but there's such a huge conversation to be had about people that might rely on them or um what they need that humans don't like what it what like they need upkeep but in a different way it's, it's not comparable to minorities and stuff in the past um because those the differences focused on in those situations were ultimately arbitrary which is what makes it such an injustice i say past since david cage is obviously trying to pull from events that have happened in the past but with androids, they're not humans. They're not less than humans, but they're not humans. And I feel like that fact is not getting any attention at all. It's very simplified. And in a way, I feel like that's actually a positive because I feel like the androids are, they're new. They're not, they're not wise. Um, <laughs> they're computer people and they're innocent and they obviously have not thought this through that much they're just fighting for their own safety and comfort and what they feel is right um the, there's not really any logic and there doesn't need to be logic not really but there will be like the people they're fighting against humans i mean you know humans have been doing this for thousands and thousands and thousands of years <laughs> humans have been doing conflict much longer than you have my friends um and the only thing they really have going for them, I think, is the fact that they are androids. And the fact that that's not getting brought up is, I think, a missed opportunity. Like, for them to get shot in the street and be killed. Like, are they killed? Beyond convenience. The best thing about robots is that they can adapt. And, like Connor says, be whatever you want them to be. But I mean that more in a physical way. Like, they are tougher, you know, stronger, faster, that kind of thing. I feel like that is a major asset but also kind of the only thing that androids have over humans. And, and I think it makes sense that they don't think about that because they're androids and um, they're innocent and they just want rights. Like, they're, they're not planning some super complicated revolution, but I think they also don't really know what they're doing. What they really need are human allies, and I'm sure that they exist. They need to petition for themselves in a more formal way because this will just get, as it is in the news, it seems like it's just getting brushed off. I don't really know what the direction is going to go in because it's really, it's a fantastic start to have a, a charismatic leader like Marcus putting the idea into the public and promoting a new idea without violence that can do in the minds of other androids and in humans and sympathetic humans because I think most, not most, I would say a lot of them must be because I think humans can't help but sympathize with things that are anthropomorphic, let alone look exactly like humans like damn there's gotta already be a big android rights group started by some oversensitive teens or something and i feel like they need to find those people and team up with them and then people who have something else to be gained by androids having rights that are maybe not so emotional but who will help them with the fine details that they can't do themselves they don't have resources and i i kind of agree with the north and that they do need to show a little bit of force because otherwise they don't really have anything they don't have power sometimes violence is the only power that you have and i and i'm not saying that it needs to be enacted but if you can show that you're willing to go that far i think that does send an important message i don't again i don't think that you need to display it but a show of force i think would be just fine if you said hey check it out we have guns by the way and uh we're gonna use them it's not a bluff test it if you want there's just a lot of different ways that i think this needs to be developed before it can see any progress at least in a real world i don't know about this, uh, david cage's world i feel like in david cage's world things might change with something as simple as this but from my perspective it's too simple, there's too many variables, and it's so new. Such a new idea for them to stand up for themselves that this is just the beginning of a larger fight. And ideally that fight will be a, a non-violent one, one that has more to do with policy than with uh, 
guerrilla warfare, but by fight I mean struggles, or, or I should say undertaking. It's a big project to get, you know, android their freedom, but I feel like it's too messy. I, I don't even know what these android laws are that they're fighting against, other than being treated like property, which nobody wants to, but I mean, working class revolution, same thing, like, like, and also them being in America, I feel like this probably wouldn't get to this level without people calling them out, the people enacting anti-android policy, because America is built on the idea of there being no such thing as a class system, and there really isn't. People come here to get away from that, and came here to get away from that, and those of us born here don't know another way. So if we see people being subjugated, typically, we're not into it. <laughs> And I think that the more conveniences we have, people my age, millennials or whatever, I feel like we are definitely, I would not say sheltered, but I would say taken care of. Our quality of life is very good and that allows us to develop abilities like empathy and communication in ways that might not have been able to be developed in the past in a more harsh environment or a less uh, accommodating environment. And if this is in the future, that means people with even more time to think and grow and more situations where empathy can be considered in a way that is just as notable as any other factor in a situation. So I guess it's hard for me to believe that this world exists in the way that David Cage has set it up. I feel like it, it looks right, but when they, like, like, I feel like people like the way that Hank talks to Connor, I feel like that's a very, very good example. He doesn't quite know what to make of him. He's kind of just going by what he's told androids are, which is computer people, but he's not really sure what to think. He's figuring it out for himself. But he's also sort of unsure and wary, and I think that's completely natural. I guess it's a video game, and I shouldn't expect too much nuance because for a video game this is very nuanced but because I, I guess I'm watching it like a movie maybe that's warping my view and I'm expecting more thought that would otherwise be balanced out with good gameplay or something like maybe if I was also playing the uh, satisfaction of that would be enough to fill in the gaps where I feel like it misses story points but damn most movies are only like a couple hours like two hours long this is like 10 hours long <laughs> you can tell you can tell just as good a story I think but um this would make a better TV show than a game, but, uh, you know, what can you do? It is what it is. But yeah, so I'm not really sure how I feel about the way that the rebels are going about their rebellion. I think it's slapdash in an unavoidable way, but I guess I'll wait and see what, um, David Cage decides that the outcome is before I get too critical, um, because if it ends up being just the start of something new, I'll be very impressed and I will be totally on board. If it ends up, you know, being the entire revolution in a week or something, I will, um, you know, I, you know, suspension of disbelief, right? I will accept it for what it is. No, I won't. I never do that. That's not a thing that I do. I never accept anything for what it is. I will absorb the information and make of it what I can to enjoy it the way that I must because I actually do really think this is a pretty great game. A lot better than I expected, I will say. I, I'm, I'm expecting a lot from it now. I'm criticizing it so harshly because it is actually exceeding my expectations. And that's good. You know, why not? How great is that? I love it when something exceeds my expectations. Good job, David Cage. I guess we'll see what happens next time. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.